All right, guys, I got a cool little shop project going on. I gotta be honest with you, I wasn't planning on video on this, so I'm a little ways into the project, but then I got to thinking, this may save somebody some money if they wanna go this route. So uh, stick with me, I'll get you caught up to speed. All right, so here's what we got going on. As you guys see in the previous videos, I bought the greater attachment for the skid steer. Paint colors don't quite match. They don't quite jive, that's all right. And in that video, I had this control box. Now I've robbed some parts off of it, so bear with me. But basically, there was three switches. One, two, three, and there's three cylinders on the grader. One, two, and three. So they had one switch for each function, if that makes sense. So. This switch would make that cylinder go up and down, that switch would make that cylinder go up and down, that one, yeah, yeah, you got it. So, what my original plan was, is I was going to buy the wiring harness and everything to where I can plug it into the wiring on my skid steer, and then I realized that was like, I think the cheapest I got down to was like 15 or 1600 bucks, and I was still gonna have to do some modifications, and I just don't think I'm gonna use this thing that much to justify 15 or 1600 bucks. Now granted, I could use some other implements with it, but I wasn't in the mood to spend $1,500. So, what I decided to do, and I'll throw up the uh, Amazon number where I bought it from, but I got this, which is basically uh, a four position momentary joystick. So you got one, two, three, or do one hand of four. So obviously, you can see what the thought process behind that is, is if you push it forward, it goes up. Push it down, it goes down. Left, right, it's your tilt. So, simple, right? No, it's not that simple. So, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how to explain this so you guys can follow along with me. To make the blade go up, you have to activate two solenoids. You have to activate the solenoid for this cylinder and activate the solenoid for that cylinder. To make the blade tilt like this, you have to activate two solenoids again, which would be this one going up, that one going down. There's different ways you could do that. I could have just had one cylinder go up or down, but I'm used to running a dozer. And a dozer pivots from the center, so that's what I'm going with. Uh, and I think, I don't know, you guys can comment down below if I'm crazy. Well, don't comment if I'm crazy or not. We know I'm crazy. Comment what you think. So, what happens is, so every time that joystick moves, it's activating two solenoids. Does that make sense? So every movement, whether it's forward, backwards, or up, down, tilt left, tilt right, I'm activating two solenoids. What my issue ends up being is you have what they call bleed over. So to prevent the bleed over, uh, now hold on, let me time out. I gotta give credit where credit's due. I did not dream this all up myself. I had help from two different people. Uh, this, this, is, <laughs> this is also part of the reason why this didn't get covered real well because this is the same weekend that uh, uh, Jason works a lot and Elite Earthworks come by. Who else was here? SLT Metalworks, Captain Gleeman. We had the whole slew in town, longer way. And then you guys didn't see on video is Wes from Burning Dinosaurs come by. If you haven't checked out his channel, go check him out. There's his cool sticker. He's got some awesome stickers. Uh, Wes is actually a software designer and really savvy on electrical. And Jason's no slouch himself. So it was a three-way brainstorm. And the first thing we come up with is, and this is actually Jason's, this is the wiring diagram. So the way this reads is to get it to go up, I need to put power to blue and yellow. To get it to go down, black and red to get it to tilt to the right red and blue and to get it to tilt to the left yellow and black so every time i move a function i'm hiding two wires that's always two different wires so i had to go through and put diodes in every lead going out which if you guys don't know what a diode is a diode is basically a check valve for electricity so that way whenever i operated one function it didn't loop back around and back feed and get another function. And I got all my diodes from Radio Shack. I'll, uh, I'll put some sort of part number or something up there if anybody's interested in it, then go check that out. 
so when it's all said and done, I got a joystick from Amazon for like $22. I got diodes from Radio Shack for like 10 bucks. I robbed some other parts and this, <laughs> this is what we come up with. Isn't it beautiful? These are all the diodes right in here. And I end up reusing the old plug that was on it and I'm still getting power from the cigarette lighter and I'll show you that here in just a minute. And then I made this fancy little bracket to mount in the skid steer. I did some random tests on this. I'm pretty sure it's gonna work pretty good. Uh, I think there's gonna be a little bit of issue with uh, priority of the valve as far as stuff coming up and going down even, but I don't think it's gonna be a huge thing. Now, is it gonna be absolutely perfect? The best controls humans ever made? No, not even close. Is it gonna be light years ahead of this? Gotta be. This is as about as primitive as primitive gets. So, where I'm going with this is, I think it's the best controls for the money. I'm gonna have maybe a hundred bucks in this whole to do. Most of that's probably shrink wrap and, and butt connectors. But anyways, you yeah, have about a hundred bucks in this whole thing versus 1500 bucks or this. Um, time will tell how well it works, but I've got all my pieces made. Let's get her installed and see if she works. All right, guys, I, pro <laughs> I probably should have covered this wiring a little bit better, but this is the switch in the bracket I made. I got some pictures, but I still got to have an angle switch. So that's what this switch here does. That just angles the blade left and right. And then the joystick does the rest. But basically the power comes into this switch and then it jumpers over to here. And there's four terminals over here, but they're all just power. And on this side of the switch is these four right here that go out to that. Uh, and then I'll put a zip tie right there. I'm just trying to, that's kind of by design right there. I just want to make sure that if something yanks on that, it don't yank and break the switch or uh, rip those diodes out because all those diodes are soldered in there. But this is how I got this thing to go in here. So I took a screw out right there and I took a screw out right here. I did, a, I did put two washer shims in there. There's a little lip right there. But this joystick, let me see if I can do this with the camera. Well, basically, I'll have to fish that down there in a minute. Oops, got it backwards. Come on. It's hard to do one-handed. Joystick will basically fit right there like that. Almost perfect. So let me get a couple screws in that thing and get her tightened down. And then I'll... Uh, We'll hook her up, see what happens. All right, guys, there she is all installed. Let me back up just a little bit. So this bracket I forgot to mention earlier is just a piece of quarter inch plate steel. It's just a random piece of steel I had here in the shop. This is a eighth by half flat stock. I had some of that laying around in the stockpile. So I did go through a little bit of trouble around some edges to make it look halfway pretty. I just didn't want anything sharp. If you get bouncing around here, I didn't want anything sharp you can cut your hand on. I ended up just taking electrical tape and taping this all up. It may not be the prettiest thing, but I was going for function on that. I just didn't want loose wires bouncing around or anything that, you know, fall down there and cross over a terminal and be a safety issue or anything like that. So I just got it all taped up nice and neat. If I ever have to go to work on it, that may be a little bit of a pain in the butt, but I think it'll be all right. And then where I'm getting my power from is actually this cord here. It goes down. I'm going to probably get some uh, sticky zip tie things and hold that up there. But it actually goes over into the cigarette lighter. I'm not overly excited about that, but here's my thought process. This whole deal, I'm trying to make it as in, in invasive, invasive, invasive. That's a big word for dirt perfect. I don't want to cut into the wiring harness. I don't want to modify any trim in here. If... I decide this don't work or if I decide I want to sell this, I just want to be able to unplug, unbolt, take it out of there and nobody will ever even know it was here. So I hate buying equipment where people do hack jobs on it, trying to get something to work and then they have beep beep it. And so anyways, I'm just trying to make everything plug and play, bolt and run, uh, whole nine yards. But anyways, so this fits real nice. I can lay my hand down here. I get to all that. I got plenty of room for it. Hits the window over there. I can pretty much run it with one hand with my switch. 
joystick, no matter what I do, it misses it. I can reach right over top of it, get my throttle. It's uh, pretty much out of sight, out of mind over unless I need it. So the core going out, again, I don't want to do anything to it. There's a little bitty hole right here. So if I was going to run this thing permanently, I can tuck that wire right in there. Basically, it'll go if I had two hands. Uh, and then I can still close my window. And everything is good to go on that. So, um, yeah. That's pretty much the setup. I'm pretty happy with everything. There's a connector right there. And I do have a connector on the power cord for if I want to unplug it. And uh, if I know I'm not going to use it for a while, I can do that. But I don't know. I'm liking it. Uh, <laughs> it looks good. Let's see if it works good. That's next on the list. So, first things first, fire up skid steer. Fire in the hole. Lap bar down. Green buttons for go. Black buttons for auxiliary. That should hot the valve up. We got power. So, I don't know if you guys can see out there. If I push this up, it should go up. Uh, I thought I had a hydraulic leak with something. So you see how it comes up at just a little bit of an angle? That's because this spool has priority over that one, which I kind of foreseen that coming, but it's not a huge deal. So, all right, so anyways, I'm getting ahead of myself. Up, down, whoops, up, down, left right and then we got angle it's not ideal i think it's going to work pretty doggone slick Time will tell. We'll get her to the job site and see what happens. But like I said, I may have a hundred bucks in this setup. Beats the heck out of fifteen hundred, and uh, yeah, I can unbolt it, call it good, and uh, health. If I get in there a skid steer, I can unbolt it and put it in that one if it don't work. So I'm happy with it, guys. I think it's gonna work pretty doggone slick. Is there a better way to do it? Yeah, I wish I had proportioning solenoids where I could, you know, soft touch it. I guess, but. It is what it is. I got $3,200 in this whole thing, including the $100 I have in the joystick. For what I'm gonna use it for, it's gonna work perfect. I'm pretty doggone tickled with it. First job will tell, so. Uh, yeah, it's, I'm happy. I'll leave it at that, I'm happy. So, hope you guys enjoyed. Maybe you learned something. If you see something I can do better, comment, let me know. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment, and we'll catch you guys on the next one.